All right, so let's take a look at a couple of things here because there are some derivatives of the ideal gas law. Uh, all ideal gas laws can be solved, or all problems that involve the ideal gas law, can be solved from PV equals NRT. But sometimes we solve them um, using some derivative forms of that. Um, if we want to find density, if you remember that density is mass over volume. All density is mass over volume. Here's our PV equals NRT. And we have volume in this, but we don't have mass. However, you should know molar mass of any substance is equal to mass per unit mole. So when we calculate molar mass, we end up with something like 18.02 grams of water equals one mole. I'm sorry, that should be H2O water. Okay, and so um, this is an equality statement from which you can write a, um, a conversion unit, and conversion units can have the mass over moles or moles over mass. But traditionally, you put mass over moles, okay? And that is molar mass, and sometimes we symbolize that as simply a capital M. I don't like the capital M, but some people use that. So using this, we can isolate N by itself, okay? So we have mass over moles equals molar mass, and therefore, if we isolate N by itself, uh, using you know, just manipulation from, from uh, your algebra classes, we know that moles are going to equal mass divided by molar mass. Okay, so this is molar mass, which we write as mass over moles in a fraction, and that's what molar mass is. Um, so moles equals mass over molar mass, just rearranging this equation. Well, now I have another way of writing uh, moles. I can write moles as mass over molar mass, and I can plug it in here. If I do that, I get mass over molar mass times RT equals PV. Well, what if I want to find molar mass? Now I've got a way to find molar mass using the ideal gas law. I can rearrange this, and I find that molar mass equals mass times the ideal gas constant times temperature over pressure times volume. So if I wanted to find the molar mass of some uh, gas, and I had all these values, I could find the molar mass. Or if I knew the molar mass, I could use this form, this derivative, this molar mass derivative of the ideal gas law to uh, solve for some other problems. But I could still go back and convert first from moles to molar mass or whatever I needed to do and do the same thing with just PV equals NRT. You don't need to remember this, but this can be helpful. Now, if I know the molar mass, well now I've got mass and, mo mass and volume. Look at that, that's density. All I have to do is rearrange this equation. Okay, remember density is mass over volume. So if I rearrange it, manipulate this properly using uh, what I know about algebra, I can end up with mass over volume equals molar mass uh, times pressure over the gas constant, the, con the um, ideal gas constant or universal gas constant times the Kelvin temperature, which is the same thing as saying density equals molar mass times pressure over the gas constants times temperature. Now, um, those equations, that is to say, um, this equation and this version, and these are all versions of the same thing. All of these are the same. Okay? There's no difference between them. It's just rewriting some of the values and rearranging the equation. Um, all of these are found in the set of homework references I gave you. Uh, let's see here. Here is the normal version of the ideal gas law. Here's the density derivative and the molar mass derivative. They are not found in the uh, chemistry or uh, honors and AP chemistry references anywhere. Uh, I think yeah, PV equals NRT is on here, but you would have to derive any of these other two if you wanted to use the derivative uh, to get there. Okay, but that's a couple of helpful 
versions of that that uh, you may be able to use.